toxic plants. Welcome to the Ranching Through COVID-19 web series sponsored by the University of Wyoming Extension. We know that this global pandemic has disrupted daily life for many Wyomans, including ranchers, but we also know that agriculture is essential business. With the upcoming spring and summer season, we want to offer some timely information to keep our Wyoming ranchers and range managers on the cutting edge because we know that ranching doesn't stop, even in a pandemic. Today we want to take a closer look at some of the poisonous plants that your livestock might encounter and how we can minimize losses to poisoning. The first step is you'll absolutely want to learn which poisonous plants might be on your ranch, including your deeded lands, your BLM, Forest Service, state leases, or any private leases you might have. For help with this, please contact your extension office, maybe the NRCS, or range cons from different agencies that you might work with. Once you've identified the poisonous plants that are on your ranch, it's important to learn what times of the year are going to be the problem times for your livestock. Some of our poisonous plants we have trouble with in the spring, while others might be poisonous later on in the late summer. Learning these critical times will be an important part of your management for avoiding losses due to poisoning. It's also important to learn and avoid the conditions that can contribute to heavy livestock losses from poisonous plants. Some of those might be that animals are driven, trailed through, unloaded from trucks onto ranges or pasture that are infested with poisonous plants, livestock that are not watered regularly, or that are allowed to become extremely hungry. Those are conditions that contribute to livestock being less selective and more likely to eat poisonous plants. Other conditions that can contribute towards heavy livestock losses from poisonous plants are if those animals are grazed early in the spring on rangelands when there is no other green vegetation except some poisonous plants, if the animals are under a lot of stress from being handled, trucked, or penned, or if they're not limited on how much and how fast they can consume the poisonous plants. It's important to know that there are no known treatments for animals poisoned by most poisonous plants. And where treatment is available, affected animals are often in remote places and cannot be reached until it is too late. Furthermore, sometimes the stress of handling animals to treat them may actually increase the probability of death. Before turning out to graze this spring, it might be a good idea to consult with your veterinarian on any possible treatments to livestock poisonings that might be likely to occur on your ranch, so that you're ready beforehand before any poisonings occur. There are hundreds of plants that are poisonous to livestock in the United States, but let's take a closer look at a few of them that you might find here in Wyoming. Larkspur, which is found throughout the western United States, causes heavy cattle losses throughout its range. It is highly palatable to cattle, and losses can be expected when cattle are allowed to graze Larkspur-infected ranges, especially where the plant is abundant or grows in large, dense patches. There are several species of larkspur in Wyoming, and they are frequently divided up into tall and low larkspurs. These larkspurs have different times of the year when they're poisonous and different strategies for minimizing livestock losses due to larkspur poisoning. Tall larkspurs have what we call a toxic window, a period of time in the summer when the toxicity levels are declining, but still very much high enough to kill a cow, and the palatability is high enough that cows find it very attractive to eat. Do all that you can to avoid grazing cattle around tall larkspur during this toxic window. If you can graze before or after, your risk will be much lower. Low larkspurs tend to grow at lower elevations where they flower and mature before the soil moisture is depleted. They are also one of the first plants to come up in the springtime. Losses to low larkspur can be minimized by deferring grazing until plants lose their flowers and pods, and also by avoiding dense stands of the plant. Halogeton is an introduced species that you will find in many disturbed areas throughout Wyoming. It prefers saline soils in areas where there are few native plants for competitions. This plant is dangerous at all times and becomes more toxic as the growing season advances. Sheep are commonly affected by this plant 
It is important to make sure that animals are well fed and not introduced to areas with halogen in it while they are hungry. Another native plant to Wyoming that frequently causes livestock poisoning is lupin. Poisoning frequently occurs in sheep when hungry animals are allowed to graze or trail through stands of lupin. Also avoid this with pregnant cows from 40 to 100 days of gestation. Cows that ingest too much of this toxic plant during this gestation window frequently have calves that suffer from physical deformities. Nitrate poisoning is a condition that causes the blood of animals to not be able to carry oxygen. All plants accumulate some nitrates, but some species, including those listed here, tend to be heavy nitrate accumulators, depending on environmental conditions. Testing for nitrates in forages is cheap and easy to do. As you plan your grazing management, don't forget to plan around poisonous plants that might be found on your ranch. Your local University of Wyoming Extension office has some great resources to help you through this process. One great free publication that's available on the internet from the USDA is entitled Plants Poisonous to Livestock in the Western States. Hello, this is Barton Stam with the University of Wyoming Extension. I'm a range management educator based in Thermopolis and I do most of my work in the western part of Wyoming. Hello, this is Derek Scasta. I'm an Extension Range Management Specialist and an Assistant Professor um, at the University of Wyoming based in Laramie, and I work statewide on issues related to range and livestock management.